being the same as the distance from the tip of your elbow to the tip of your finger. If we take that distance and multiply that by five, then we actually get the distance from your elbow to the top of your head. We could then multiply that by five, and we get the distance from the top of your head to the tip of your fingers. And if we multiply that by five, then we get the distance from the top of the head to the tip of the toes, which is your true height. And this is an amazing coincidence. There is another rule known as the golden spiral, which is directly linked to the golden ratio, which also appears many times in nature. Another way of looking at um, Fibonacci and the golden section is to take a unit square and place another unit square next to it. So we've got two squares next to each other. We could then place a square on top of that, which would obviously be two by two. To the right, we could put a square three by three. Below it would have to have a square five by five. And to the left, we would have a square eight by eight. As we get bigger and bigger, you can see that these rectangles conform more and more closely to the golden section. And interestingly, if we then take the first unit section and take that as a radius, we can then generate a beautiful spiral. Examples of this spiral's appearance in nature include pine cones, the shells of certain sea creatures, hurricane spirals, and even the arms of galaxies. Many artists have recognized the aesthetic power of the spiral and used it in their art, like Salvador Dali's The Sacrament of the Last Supper and Seurat's Veda Zetanier. But it was the Greeks who discovered it. We can demonstrate this by taking a picture of the Parthenon and overdrawing uh, rectangles over the different sections, and you'll find that the rectangles conform precisely to the idea of the golden section and five, this magic number, 1.618033. Some speculate that a number which appears so often in nature must be evidence for the existence of God, and that he designed everything to this sacred number. My own belief is that the laws of nature are governed by mathematical situations and laws which can easily be explained, and that without realising it, we live in a world where mathematics appears all around us. Uh, it's interesting to think that Galileo, for example, was unable to question anything about nature, etc., because they felt that God created the world, and therefore anything else, you know, to question anything else, to explore anything else, was mere heresy, and Galileo, for example, was persecuted. I think today we can look at the evidence and then we can make up our own mind as to whether God exists. Even with all the mathematics, we still have to come down to our own thoughts about mathematics and we can still be believers in God and understand the laws, or we could be disbelievers and understand the laws and decide that God does not exist. It's a question of what we believe ourselves. So, next time you see a seashell or a pine cone, you may be holding a piece of the answer to the ultimate question. Does God exist?